Welcome back to Spitball and Cards. In today's episode, we want to talk about the tops rip net that just happened and then talk about some shout outs and some pickups that we've recently had. So let's talk about who is here today. We have Ty, Scott, Jeff, and Chris. I'm going to trade Ty spots just because that's just gonna say, it that. Yeah, it felt weird. But now I'm back, back in the top left. But with that being said, I want to discuss top trip night with you all. Ty, you work at a card shop where this happened. And I know Jeff and Chris, did you go to Burbank and see anything there because you're so close? I, I did oh, not yeah. do anything, but I'd love to hear all of your thoughts around Top Trip Night. Uh, for those that don't know, they got a bunch of celebrities, athletes, everything to go to these events, and it was pretty cool. So, Ty, what was your experience like? It was pretty fun. Um, so, I got a little excited because Tops teased out some of the athletes who were going to be at various shops around the country. And I saw right on their page on Instagram that uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., was going to be at a shop that Austin Riley was going to be at a shop and that Spencer Strider was going to be at a shop. And I thought, I wonder if all three are coming to cards HQ because surely one of them is right. Right guys. No, <laughs> none of them came to cards HQ, which is by the way, one mile from truest park where the Braves play. Uh, and is apparently the, the biggest, you know, celebration of tops in terms of the new design and prototype for card shops. We did not get the Braves players this time. Hopefully next time. Uh, we did get Darth Vader, which was pretty cool. Ooh. And uh, accompanied by two stormtroopers. So uh, they did photos for 30 minutes of somebody in a Darth Vader uh, outfit. It wasn't actually like a Darth Vader actor, obviously. Uh, one of them being deceased recently. Rest in peace, James Earl Jones. Uh, we also got Jasper Johnson, who I admittedly had never heard of. Seems like a very... Fine young man, uh, five-star recruit uh, in college basketball who is right now committed to the University of Kentucky. Cool. So he was there, um, and I don't uh, – like I said, I don't actually know much about him. Um, I was kind of posted up in the corner of Cards HQ, uh, well, sort of in the front. I don't know what side you describe it as, but I was by our TVs. People were hanging out watching uh, college sports. And uh, I set up our, our market movers glow bar and was just like helping people comp cards and kind of showing off market movers and really just talking to people, making a few trades, that type of stuff. And it was packed. Uh, shop was packed. It was very busy. We had culture collision here. Uh, the first time I believe they've had a fall culture collision in Atlanta, um, which, by the way, I heard was it wasn't particularly well attended. Um, probably a disappointment for the show organizers. It was it was a little sparse. I was there on Friday and. Um, it was kind of dead to be totally honest. And, and it seemed like only about half of the tables were filled with dealers. Mm. But um, I think a lot of those people who were there came over to, to, to rip night at cards HQ. And uh, there were people there super late. We, we ended up buying the UFC card, the main event and sticking around and watching that until like one o'clock in the morning. And there were still people hanging out at the shop. So um, it was a lot of fun. It, overall, it was a great night. That sounds great. Yeah, I, I, Jeff, I think Burbank was open well past their hours as well, but not probably not until 1 a.m. That sounds fantastic. I, I, you, Jeff needs to get a, a liquor license in there, Teapot. <laughs> we did I have mean, that's all that's missing. Uh, it was sponsored by uh, a local brewery, Scofflaw Brewery. So they provided Ooh. beer, and oh um, we had uh, we had beer, and may or may not have had some other things in the back to uh, have <laughs> options. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it was, it was a lot of fun, and like I said, there were a ton of people there. A lot of kids wheeling and dealing and making trades and um, coming up and asking me like, hey, can you help me figure out how much this card's worth? Which I actually have a lot of fun doing that just to make sure they know, you know, what they're getting rid of. Not not all these kids have like phones or a way to look up values. Um, we do have market movers set up on two iPads in the shop, too, that I saw a lot of people using. So um, it was just overall we had we had a little bit of food and it was it was a lot of fun. OK, so Jeff, tell us about you... Burbank. Yeah. Jeff, go uh, ahead. All right, Burbank. Uh, yeah, so I took the kids there, my three kids, including Chris. We uh, drove over to the shop, and what time did we go? It was like five ish, I want to say. I think we got there. We got there like four thirty ish because the raffle was starting at five. Yes, they were having giveaways every hour on the hour, and I thought it'd be fun to go. Um, they're usually open till seven, and we had heard that uh, Carl Anthony Towns was supposed to be there at some point, but honestly, I didn't think we were going to stay that long, but we did. Uh, yeah, we got there and got our raffle tickets and, uh, yeah, on, on the hour at five, Rob uh, and his daughter who works there now just started giving a ton of stuff away. 
cards, uh, unopened wax. My daughter got a box. I think, oh, it was Chrome Basketball. got a, uh, Yeah, she box. got a Chrome Basketball Blaster. Huey, uh, your son ended up with a Caitlin Clark Chrome Rookie and a PSA 10 slab. Wow. I mean, Rob, yeah. Rob gave stuff away for an hour. They did he these did. raffles. He like, was out of stuff, just... and then he went over to the wall and just kept pulling stuff off the shelf. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard another employee are like, uh, make, make sure those are scanned out so they don't just think somebody walked off with them. But yeah, Rob was great. Uh, you could tell that he enjoyed having having a full shop, which is not unusual, but it was seemed extra full there. And uh, we ended up staying until Carl Anthony Towns came. He came up about six, I want to say six fifteen. About six, like yeah, that. six inch. Uh, and he was great. I didn't realize he was such a collector. He talked to, uh, he took some questions from kids and talked to Rob. And uh, me, me and my kids were about four or five feet away from him. They couldn't believe how tall he was, of course. But he uh, he actually worked at a card card shop was his first job. So he was telling wow. everybody a little bit about that. Knows a lot about the hobby. Uh, so he ripped ripped a bunch of stuff, gave cards away, made some trades, really interacted with everybody. And then people were just trying to get his autograph. And uh, Tops and Fanatics makes no promises about autographs, but he was really great. And he said that, he would stay until everybody who got an autograph or who wanted an autograph got one. Just really, wow. really kind guy. He, I think he made a lot of new fans for those who weren't weren't fans of him. And or, or uh, those of us who may or may not have known who he was in the first place. That's right. There were there were some of us there as well, unfortunately. And and some people just showed up that you could tell weren't even really into cards, but they were big either Wolves fans or Cat fans. And so I think. To that end, Fanatics is doing one thing that they wanted to do, which is bring other non-card people into a card location and get them exposed to it. So uh, it was great. It was it was a really cool experience. My kids loved it. They each got Topps Rip Night shirts to, to bring. And um, we stood for a long time, and there were no complaints by the kids, which was surprising. Did you ask him if he's the one who paid $43,000 for a Bobby Witt Jr. Orange yeah. auto? <laughs> we should have. No. I, I, uh, I could have, he, he, baseball is his favorite sport. He grew up playing baseball. Hmm. And, uh, so he does, he does collect baseball cards. That's well. funny. What, yeah. so what, what was Towns doing out there? Like, that's a great question. Uh, before he, before he got there, I was talking with Rob, Rob, the, the owner of Burbank. And I said, does, does cat live out here? What's, what's the deal? And he said, I honestly don't know. We just, the, uh, tops and fanatics just kind of assign athletes to them. Yeah. Uh, and so he wasn't sure how he got a, a signed cat. And I'm know, sure they was... wanted a player of significance for Burbank personally. Plus, it is a great place because there's a lot of players in the offseason there, of course. But I sure, well, yeah, they wanted a player of signif significance, but there's also like eight professional teams within that's fair and miles of Burbank. So if they wanted a player of significance. Jasper Johnson was at Cards <laughs> HQ. <laughs> Speaking of Kentucky, know. right? Another Kentucky yeah. player. Um, that's it. I, I they, they must have like the network. Right. Like they must probably know. Like there must be some kind of a check-in mechanism for them, like the week of or like a few days before, to ask these guys like, "Where are you going to be?" Because it, it seemed like all that stuff was like very much moving parts up until the eleventh hour with who was going to be where. So maybe that's maybe he was just like in LA for some reason, and you know. Yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking, Teapot, maybe the, the bigger shops got, I don't want to say lesser names, but like less incredibly famous people, like Average Joe's, which is also out here. It's about an hour and 20 minutes away from us, maybe an hour and a half from us. Uh, Mike Trout was there wow. yeah. uh, for like a half hour, an hour or so. So there's some videos of that that look pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and I, I know you guys are a huge store, but those Braves players went to, it looked like some smaller shops based on the videos I saw on Instagram. So maybe they're trying to like promote the smaller shops. Maybe, I don't think Cards HQ needs... <laughs> more promotion although maybe it deserves it i you know i will say so so there's a place called giant sports cards that's yeah. kind of on the opposite side of the northern side of atlanta um they've had acuna there in the past and he was there i believe he was there that's where he was scheduled to go again this last saturday um i'm not sure if he like kind of lives over on that side of town or if he's just like that's like his lcs and he's got connections there but they seem to already have a, a little bit of a relationship established with him and then Strider and Riley went to another place called Ducks Dugout, which is actually closer to where I live. It's only about 15 minutes from Cards HQ. And uh, 
they do a lot of signings and things there. They've been open for, I don't know, not forever, but maybe like five years or something like that. And uh, they do a lot of signings there. So there, there might just be like pre-existing dynamics that they're familiar with these shops and already have them. But hopefully at some point we get, uh, we get some of the Braves players maybe in the off season into cards HQ. Maybe Ozzy Elbies can come in and see his one of one uh, cards that we have in the shop and talk about those or something. Yeah, yeah, I mean I Freeman. Just, Freeman's been in town for three days. He might want to stop in and see that canary diamond that uh, that that Jeff has in there. Good idea. Do you think know. these players care about those cards? Like genuine question. I bet some do, but like, do you think Freddie wants to see that? I think he would see it if you showed it to him, but he's not driving out of his way to look at it yeah. for sure. Like yeah. I, you know, it doesn't. I don't think that registers. But well, you're right. I think Acuna and that giant store. I think they. That's where they. I think that's where they filmed his tops commercial. I was talking to them at um, not this last Burbank show, but the one before that they usually come out for it. And I, I saw them from Atlanta and I'm like, Oh, do you guys, do you have any cool, like Freddie Freeman stuff? You know, cause you're an Atlanta store. The guy looked me in the eye and said, no, we didn't bring our Freddie Freeman stuff. You know, we left that at home in the shop. Yeah. I, 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 that one, I got a hard time buying that. <laughs> I was like, what, what? Why wouldn't you take that with you to yeah, where you he didn't played. bring the Dodger player to LA? That doesn't make any sense. Sounds like they don't like money. Yeah. <laughs> there was like a 10 second where we're just kind of blinking back and forth at each other. And I was like, okay, moving on next table. Yeah. I, I, it, I just think we do have to give top some credit for, for the hobby rip night. Like teapot said, it seems like there were a lot of moving parts right up until the day. And they had a lot of coordination to take care of. And it seemed from all the videos that I saw on Instagram, people around the country had a great time and they uh, really got some good engagement with especially kids, which is is the best part, kids and, and these pro athletes, which is great. Yes, I Jeff and I witnessed at least two or three kids immediately become addicted to sports cards. Like you could see it in their face. This one girl won um, like one of the raffles that Rob did. And I think I believe she won three cards. It was like an Otani card, a uh, LeBron card, and um, a Ray card from Star Wars. And she came up to get her cards, and you could see like her eyes were just absurdly wide, and her father or parents were in the back, just like, "Ah, oh, hell, <laughs> this is going to be a problem down the road." But Jeff and I were also wondering, like, financially, how this works because Rob was giving away like real stuff. Like they auctioned off. Um, Jeff, what was it? it? Was a Steph Curry top? They raffled top off, chrome yes. Rookie, Steph Curry rookie, um, a bunch An of Otani tops chrome. I think refractor in a BGS slab, as well as a bunch of like cheaper tops now stuff. Maybe and as part of, of uh, signing with Fanatics and agreeing to come off eBay, they got some kind of like a yeah, you know, marketing yeah. allowance or something to yeah. to do that. A lot of unopened product was just or maybe Rob just knows. Great. Getting those kids addicted early will keep them coming back, and then yeah, they get addicted. I, 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 spend I, money and. In a later IG video, he said he was just supposed to give certain things away, but then he, he called it the, the Santa Claus complex took over and just wanted to give away everything Rob away. Rob seems like a pretty good dude. Like I would, yeah. I would legitimately believe he was just doing that because he's like, you know what? I want to do more. I could totally see that happening. And it's not even like a prideful thing. It's just he's excited. Yeah, he was, he's playing. I think he, he also playing the long game. Getting yeah, these totally kids right. addicted is smart. It was, really it was fun seeing the – the athletes or like in this case cat it was fun when he was pulling the cards he was telling stories about the players that he played with and against how magic johnson's his favorite player he talked a little bit about that and then he actually pulled a numbered magic which was cool and he was talking about how he's good friends with cj stroud and then he opened a new tops product or I, i'm not sure if it's tops i believe it is yeah tops composite time yeah, I know, it was, yeah. football product and he actually pulled a stroud auto out of there and so he was so excited, like he couldn't believe it and was taking pictures. And um, he, he called a couple of his friends while he was there, talked to Nas Reed because uh, a kid wanted to cool. trade for Nas Reed cards. So he was just genuinely excited about the cards. It was it was fun. It was infectious, the, the excitement. Oh, Jeff, do you remember that one trade he made? Like early in his rip, I forget what the card was, but he was like, so I'll, I'll trade this. Whoever makes me the best offer. And people were like, it was a feeding frenzy. This looked like a guy in an aquarium, like throwing fish into a tank or something. But this dude in the back was like, I'll give you one of my shoes. So uh, <laughs> he was just like, if you're going to give me one shoe, you got a deal. So this guy came up and took off one of his shoes. And like they took a picture. I think it's on Instagram now. And he Yeah, that, the was, that was for a, a Nas Reed auto patch. 
Oh, and that's then right. so yeah, Kat couldn't believe it. He yeah. actually had the kid's shoe and called Nasri and said, "This this guy traded me a <laughs> shoe for your card." Um, of course, he signed it and gave the kid back the shoe, but it it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's cool. Any other top trip day we want to talk about, or is that pretty good? It's good. I, I hope I hope they yeah. continue it and and like yeah. these like are the events. It'd be fun to see other athletes. I love that they did it for a lot of shops, not just one shop or the big cities. Like, I, how many shops was there, Ty? I feel like you might know off the top of your head. They, it I think was they, like dozens, I believe. Yeah, dozens they just pretty much like do it all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Like that's something I do respect is because being from Idaho, you know, I never would have gone to the National or to Burbank to go to the card shows down there. But maybe they had something close. Maybe in Salt Lake they had one of these rip nights, and a notable player was there that make the trip fun. So I, I do like that they did that. That's cool. Nice. All right. Well, speaking of fanatics, that was a lot of praise. Let's talk about something that I don't know if we'll think is quite as cool. And that is fanatic sports book, which just opened. <laughs> How do we feel about that? Like, does this just confirm a hundred percent? Oh, I want to know one thing. We are not pro addicting kids to anything. We were just joking. <laughs> Someone's going to take that comment way too serious. So please know we were kidding. <laughs> we don't want that. We want people to be smart with their money. But that gets us to not being smart with your money with sports gambling. And Fanatics is now in that industry. Jay-Z cut the uh, the ribbon at the opening yeah. ceremonies. What are our thoughts? Is that fine? Is it a big enough company where it's not a big deal? Or do we think that's a conflict of interest? How are we feeling about it? What do you think, Jeff? Well, for months, actually, since ever since this channel began, we've talked about the increasing price of wax and how opening baseball cards specifically and other sports is gambling. It's like a lottery ticket. You're trying to get a big card. Chances are you're not going to win anything when you, when you rip. Um, so I guess what's the next logical step, literally gambling. And it seems like <laughs> fanatics has the connections in the sports world. So it's not surprising that they'd want a piece of that action as, as it's just an incredible amount of money that gets poured into uh, sports betting annually so i'm not surprised it's i don't know i don't know it just the the thought of the hobby being sort of a quaint little community that it was when we grew up is is not really the case anymore so i, I don't know i don't know i i hope it doesn't influence the decisions they make on the card side that that'd be my biggest worry maybe the schools are jets on the card side i that's just blind optimism i doubt it will but chris what are your take on this um, so, uh, they opened it up at a, um, a casino called ocean in Atlantic city, which could not coincidentally, I will be at in about a month. So, uh, nice. I will definitely check this out, um, firsthand. It's not like, I don't know. It's just not surprising. Like if you ever watch a video of, of a breaker breaking, it's the same thing. Like it's just your, that's basically a, a roulette wheel with baseball cards. Like it's the, it's the same general aspect. It's gambling. So this, this seems like a very smooth, simple transition for them. I, I've been bothered for a while. If you watch the MLB network, it's constant like FanDuel this, Fan, or, uh, FanDuel this, and DraftKings that. They even have like a show at this point dedicated to like the over and unders and the betting lines that they want people to take or they're recommending. I the, the gambling is a it's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous, and I I generally avoid it. Um, this one weekend uh, every October, notwithstanding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do we want someone or the company that makes our baseball cards also doing sports betting? I don't know. Like I said, it's it's just another way to gamble through them. So it's probably not that big a deal. It just sort of lets you know exactly what what they're doing, how they're thinking. I agree. Ty, what are your thoughts? Um, I see this conversation come up over and over again with people talking about sports cards being gambling and opening packs being gambling. And the tone in which it's discussed is very frequently as though they're, they're, it's like a hot take or it's like something that people deny. I've actually never heard anybody deny that opening sports packs is gambling like ever. Yeah. I've never heard anybody say it's not, it is gambling. There's no way to argue that it's not gambling. You're spending money to open something, the contents and value of which are unknown. That's like the, de that's like one of the definitions I would say. We hope they're unknown. Gambling. Yeah. We hope yeah. they are. May <laughs> that maybe have been pre-scanned or, or. That part's not even true it. anymore, Ty. That's unfortunate. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. The, the, talk about the house odds really against you now. Um, so, so that's sort of interesting to me that this like 
has been a conversation for as long as I've been back in the hobby for five years, like that people keep talking about it. Like it's something that anybody denies and I never have. I understand the concern about gambling and most often it's brought up about kids. So to your point, Scott, it's like, well, we don't want kids getting addicted, you know, addicted to this and, and trying to spend beyond their means or whatever. But like, it does really impact a lot of adults too, who spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on opening packs. There was actually a video that dropped on our SCI channel on Sunday uh, about a guy who drove up from Florida with a whole bunch of sealed wax, Pokemon wax, and then a bunch of cards in a, in like a little U-Haul type truck. And he drove it up from Florida to sell it to Cards HQ and they did a whole video on it. I thought it was a really good video. Um, but toward the end, this guy's in the office with Ryan and Jeff negotiating how much their offer is and how much they'd be willing to pay for these um, what were kind of deemed to be like five to twenty dollar cards, but it was in a multi-row box and they're kind of haggling about this, you know, what what they're gonna do and how they're gonna approach it. Ryan was being very transparent with the pricing and how he got to the numbers and whatever. But this guy just kept saying over and over again, he had a little bit of this look of like disappointment or shock on his face because he he sort of alluded to the fact that he had ripped all this stuff or had like gotten it from breaks, like he had spent all this money. And so the the suggestion or implication was that maybe he spent many thousands of dollars, maybe many multiples above and beyond what he was actually getting in return from what Ryan said. And at one point Ryan said outright, basically like, yeah, like I understand where you're coming from and what it, that kind of stings. Like when you open product, you're not always going to get, you know, you know, you don't, you don't really re get back what you put into it. And so that was sort of like, uh, I'm glad they left it in like they left it. This is a card shop that's showing with transparency, like how they're negotiating and what they're willing to pay. And they obviously have a vested interest in sealing wet, selling wax, break, you know, break spots, all of this stuff. But everybody does need to understand that it's you're paying for entertainment more than you're paying for good odds to, you know, to to double your money or to win big. You're better off if you want to gamble going to the casino, play slots, put it on black on roulette and walk away, whatever or frankly, probably even sports betting. Uh, so, you know, sports betting being a part of the fanatics world, does it bother me? I don't know. Probably not. It just seems logical if I'm being honest. It seems real. It seems like something they would do. It seems like something that actually makes sense. We're looking at the sports world holistically. Americans now spend more money every year on sports gambling than they do the stock market. And it's just part of the world we live in. So I, I look at it through more of a realistic lens, not through a lens of like idealism or utopianism where sports gambling just doesn't exist. Um, everything, there's many things in life which are not inherently evil, which done in moderation are completely fine. But we as humans, uh, maybe especially men, have a hard time with discipline and temperance and those things in many cases. And that's where it gets to be, uh, you know, really problematic. So if you have a problem gambling, I think there's a phone number for that and definitely try to do it. And I'm not, I'm not saying that condescendingly either. Like seriously, like, you know, don't yeah. let it destroy your life. I think it's 1-800-GAMBLER. I always say that on podcasts all the time. Cause I yeah, and I'm glad I mean, always have to say that because they do, they make them do it. You know, it reminds me of the, of the, uh, you know, smoking may cause cancer things and all the other stuff. And I don't know, maybe it's only a matter of time before we have a big sticker on the front of sports card boxes too, that say, you may get nothing out of this. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, they run that phone number on those, uh, like in like a, I don't know, like a quarter font uh, on those ads while Jamie Foxx is jumping up and down and celebrating, like I'm buying a new car with his sports yeah. winnings. But then in the tiniest yeah. little font, it's like, oh, hey, this. LeBron's dancing with Kevin Hart. That's the one I keep seeing recently. It's uh, some commercial between the two of them that I fast forward through. But Okay. Well, guess, let's guess how much money was spent on sports gambling last year alone. Not like profited by. The businesses but how much was spent like how much was gambled how much money was gambled in 2023 and i can guarantee it's much higher in 2024 and this is just the amount that's being reported to whatever number you're looking at scott that's yep yeah, that's from s and talk Gold. about the off the book stuff which there's probably at least talk to, talk to otani about that one yeah well we we know there's at least a what or 20 EK. million on that yeah <clears throat> or six you're um, talking about i'm gonna say like a hundred billion it's going to okay. be something absurd. I, I don't even know where to start. I, I, I don't know where to start. $50 billion. Ty, you're talking sports gambling or just gambling? Sports gambling. Just sports gambling, not casinos. But every sports book, every app, 
Everything that's reportable. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oof. I play, play the prices right and say a dollar. Um, uh, we have a hundred, and I think you said fifty, Jeff. 50. Just throwing it out there. I'll go twenty-five billion. Chris is the closest. One hundred and nineteen point eight billion dollars. Okay. Yes. Good, guess. Good, guess. Good job, Chris. Good job. That's so, just. That's just. Fanatics wants their cut. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean. I kind of want to cut out of that now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Chris keeps losing his. Well, and, and selfishly, if a cut of that makes uh, the, the profitability of Fanatics go up such that they don't need to be as profitable on their card business, that's great. That'd be great. That's, yeah. I, also, I yeah, that is, is this not a money-making scheme here where I will buy a card of a player and then you immediately bet against that player? I feel like that there's no way success. for us to lose here. It's like the only yeah. – yeah. That's a great idea. Well, we'll try this next year. Yeah. We'll make videos on it too. Well, cool. We talked about potentially showing our recent pickup. All right. Well, I will go first just because I already have mine ready to be shared. I'm just going to show my screen versus like actually showing the cards. Uh, but the very first and probably the biggest one I picked up recently, I actually got this one this last week and I'm really glad to get it in hand. I've wanted a blue Mookie for a long time and they have eluded me. I could have bought it when it was $1,100. I could have bought it when it was $2,500. I could have bought it all the way up. I never, I luckily didn't buy it when it was like $8,000. Right. I ended up getting this for like $3,800 on a My Slabs auction. So is that a good price? I hope so. I did a, a poll on my story where I asked, is so-and-so's blue Bowman Chromatograph overvalued or undervalued? And I showed what the most recent sale was. And this one was picked as the most undervalued. So that made me feel good about the price. I don't know if that is true, but I'm excited to have it. It was graded in 2014, which I think is cool, right when it was released. So it's been in this lab forever, and I'm not going to crack it out. It's a good subgrades. So that's my biggest pickup. You thinking um, about crossing it, though? Send it in for, like, graded card review? Um, I, I haven't, like, looked close to see if it could cross. I'm guessing the fact that it's still in this case means it probably couldn't at least not 100 percent certainly i should try the graded one where they keep in the sub i should try that i mean it has great subgrades so uh i didn't see any major issues without like looking really close which is good and then i picked up this this was kind of cool it's hard to find active playing days 101s of players you care about so this is larry walker from 2004 leaf limited as the spotlight platinum one of one it's i don't know if i paid too much for it to be fully transparent i actually asked ty when this popped up ty should i do it i paid 300 dollars for it so is that good i don't know but i'm okay with it because it's a cool one of one that i'll have for a long time then i picked up this dynasty larry walker i always love rockies patches because they look really nice that's one Beauty. good thing about being a rockies fan there's like dodgers fans their patches are really bad like there's no there's no like big logo like the Rockies or, you know, things like that. Or like they're pretty like silver trim along with purple. It's just blue on white. It's like all it is. So that's one thing I'm grateful about. And Larry Walker has a good autograph. So that was pretty cool. So those are like my bigger pickups. I also did pick up a lot of smaller stuff I'll show. I bought this red Billy Butler out of five yesterday for $44. Um, no one else in the world would ever pay that for that card. And that's why I won it, obviously. But it was nice because now that I have this one, the other four, I do not care about them. That's how I feel about Billy Butler. I only need one of the card and I don't need another one because my goal isn't to have all of them. My goal is just to like have one cool card of each parallel of each set. So that's the I'm way. comfortable. Speak of gambling, I'm willing to place a bet that if someone else has one of those and they listed it for like $25, yeah, you'd buy it. 25. You'd buy it. <laughs> if it was if it was under 25 bucks, that's a price I feel comfortable. I guess I'm a hypocrite because this card right here, this is a black. <laughs> this is my fifth black, but this black I got for 250, which I told that to Chris, and he said that sounds like the price it should be, and that kind of hurt a little bit. But this is numbered to 54, <laughs> and whoever sold it, I don't know if they knew that, but it's out of 54, so it's his true black flagship, which I was pretty yeah. excited about. I was gonna say, Scott, isn't there another one like the canary or something else that you keep? buying as many copies of as you can find yeah. too yeah i'll show you right now i have i have like seven of these hope diamonds but they're my cheap. goal is only to get one except yeah, I mean, for this other if they're expensive set. i will not pay 45 dollars for another red ever again but here's a hope diamond here's out of 10 atomic this is a really cool patch of grinky and goldschmidt this is their only combined patch of the two just by themselves two hall of famers i bought this really cool uh rookie year grinky platinum medallion number to 100 
uh, that one. I love Platinum Medallions, personally, some of my favorite cards across the 90s and 2000s. And let's see, here's another Hope Diamond Butler, another Platinum Medallion, more Butler, more another another Hope Diamond. That's my third in the last few months. So, anyways. I feel like along the bottom of the screen, we should be putting 1-800-GAMBLER right now. (laughs) (laughs) Anyone has an addiction that they need to talk about. Yeah, I'm addicted to to buying cards that I completely lose my butt on the moment I hit buy now. That's what collecting is. It's buying something you like. That's what collecting is. And that's what Billy Butler is for you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. One day I'll get the super fractor, but that day, who knows what that'll go for. All right, Ty, what are your pickups? Uh let's see. I'll pull up my screen too just to show a couple that I had posted on Instagram. I've taken a little little hiatus from Instagram. Uh I did I took it off my phone, but um I picked up this awesome Acuna. Uh the print run on these is estimated about 15. That's based on pack odds, so who knows what it really is. But these are hard to come by. I know Chris, how you feel about this when you got the auto. So went for that uh i snagged this really cheap at cards hq i honestly probably throw it on my ebay with a buy it now because i i just thought it was priced too cheap there um but it's a really good picture uh i got this cheap too and this one was a fun one uh scooble um the orange to 25 great image uh the it's in it's actually psa graded um so it's a nine but the case is scratched to heck and i didn't feel like getting the Mm -hmm. mcguire's out to clean the the case off um and then that's just a box topper, but it, what a great photo of Jeter. And this one, I I don't think I showed this before, but I picked this up at the National. It says gold rainbow foil board, one of one. So those are the ones that I posted online. And then I grabbed a couple a couple cards from you, Scott, um, which one I'm really excited about is this, uh, this Atomic Verlander to five. Um, so my lighting someday will be better in my office, but you can you know, obviously Can't. see it. that's awesome. Oh, but that card looks really cool. Yeah, it's like amazing. That card is gorgeous. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, Chris Sales on my fantasy team carrying me to the final this year and hopefully about to win the Triple Crown just like uh, Scooble. So picked that one up, um, grabbed a, a gold, finally got a gold Smoltz um, out of 2003 Tops Chrome. So I have the, the X-Fractor and the, the Black and a few others. I uh, got this for five bucks at uh, Culture Collision. It was one of my two purchases at Culture Collision. And, um, and then I finally got the in dugout SSP of Scooble, yeah. this rookie. Uh, I got this in a PSA eight for a really cheap, like 80, $83 or something. And it looks really good. It's centered. And, um, then we're I've all been grateful. After- we're all grateful by the way, that Scooble's wearing the uh, older uniform pants and not the 2024 <laughs> uniform pants on that card. Which yeah. Be a little uh, bit different. Yep. No junk visible on the yep. card. Uh, and then I've been scooping some Jobs. So I got these two base Sapphires PSA 10s on eBay recently. And I'm excited because I got the yellow uh, PSA 10 number to 75. Uh, sorry, is that the first? What size? That? That is, is that the Sapphire? Is that his first? I couldn't. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah nice. it is. It's his first. So there have been rumors about him getting called up. And the Tigers are in wild, uh, wild card contention right now. Mm. It would be interesting to see if he does get us spot start or maybe some relief innings or something um and i'm 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 honestly kicking myself because i missed out on the gold <clears throat> number to 15 there was a psa 10 i think it was a pop one on ebay or it might have been pop three i don't remember but i thought about making a play at it. i did make a play at it and i in hindsight feel like i should have mega bid it went for like 370 and then whoever bought it relisted it for like 2K immediately on eBay. So don't you hate uh, that? Yeah. I mean, whatever. You know, it's their right, it's their prerogative. But yeah, still I was sucks. Bummed about it. Mm. So well, cool, Ty. Thanks I for sharing your pickups. Chris and Jeff, you have one big one that you've already talked about, but I think we should hear it one more time. Ah, you- let's stick with the little ones. You don't want to hear the, the big one, one the, the biggest of the whole video. Uh, I already built it up. You gotta do it. I mean, Jeff, do you have it? Um, well, I'm ne- it's never too far from me, I got to <laughs> say. So. <laughs> All right, good. As long as I, I feel better when you can physically see it. Let me make your screen bigger. Who Ooh. is that? Who is that guy? How do I do that? Uh, this is Angel's a, Prospect. A baseball player. I got, I got it. Here you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, if you didn't see the video Chris and I put up about our journey to get this card, please check it out on the – Blad and about slab and channel, but uh, yeah, this is our Otani Grail. That's yes, it was, a very, it was a hair graying 
uh, stressful week of panicked card sales to try and raise money to meet a gentleman in, in person to buy that. Wow. Yes. I don't want to hear about hair graying when I'm 30 years old with no hair. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I don't have to worry about well, my I don't feel bad for actually. you too. I got some white coming yeah. in. Offense was intended. I have to I have to be <laughs> Hey, it fits the last name of Baldwin. I don't know if that's unfortunate or fitting. That's yeah, it. Bald for the win. Yeah, it's right there. It's all right there. Me. That's me. Yeah. Yep. Pickups did you get? Uh, Jeff, you want to keep going? Sure. Yeah. I uh I've been pretty disciplined with my approach to Jackson Cheerio cards. The only one I had coming into this season was one that I was lucky enough to pull from a box, his his first Bowman Auto. But um, I couldn't take it any longer, so I decided to pick up a couple. So I picked up his Chrome SSP. Nice. This one with uh, sunglasses on, smiling a little bit. And the image is growing on me. It's one of the better Chrome SSP images of this Yeah. Yep. year there weren't it definitely is better than the dominguez we looked at last week it's a good image <laughs> oh my yeah. god yeah yeah the only one i like better than Churio is the uh the otani where he's introduced or introduced on opening day in korea with the like sparklers all around him yeah that, that card is fantastic but that Churio is the best rookie one i think and then on the cheaper side i picked up this all-star game oh cool parallel Churio rookie uh just because i love the way it looked so it was a PWE eBay purchase. Nice. And then this is, is kind of a strange card I picked up. And this is the first custom card that I've bought. I bought a lot of art cards before and and um, like original artwork cards. But this is the first custom card I bought. And it's from LJ Custom Cards. And a viewer on uh, Instagram told me about it. And I went and looked at his site. And I just loved it. I it's really cool how he makes these cards. You can see he used the outside of a prism. He used the patch in the middle and then the image of Cheerio. Uh, so it's a one of one custom nice. from LJ's. And again, this is probably not, it's like what Chris was talking about. It's not going to go up exponentially in value, but I just love the way it looks and it's a really cool card. So nice. Yeah. Glad to get this to my collection. So Jeff, you're distinguishing you're con are you considering piggy banks like art cards as opposed to custom? Is that a dis cause you've bought some of his stuff before, haven't you? Yes. Yes. I've got piggy banks cards and uh, like sketch cards. I'm just dis distinguishing, I guess I just mean custom cards in terms of where they take other cards, take them apart and put them together. So gotcha. I guess de deconstructed custom cards. Okay. I should say. Yeah. So can Very I piggyback cool. on yours real quick? Is that okay? Sure. Piggy banks so on Jay it. from, let me actually get his full handle. He deserves to get shouted out. Jay from Local Hits. It's J underscore local local hits. He sent me this. It's a Billy Butler, kind of similar that he put Kansas City like in the background. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Pretty cool card. Yeah. And so I, I want to give him a shout out. Super thick. Like I think it's awesome. So and he put yeah. in the back the one of one. He sent this to me because I finished the Billy Butler Tops Chrome Rainbow. So this is a Tops Chrome card. He did something similar to. So yeah, it looks like 2013. 2013. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Celebrating a walk-off home run, which is a good image. It's better than really that. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah and like I said, thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Historically, those cards really haven't done a lot for me that people take them apart and make custom cards. But um, I saw this one and it just really resonated with me. So I'm like, well, awesome. Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of it. speaking of cards that show walk-off home runs, I picked up a couple uh, Stadium Club autos recently that the images are just so great. I couldn't. I could not resist. Sweet. So the first one is uh, this Jordan Alvarez. Yeah. So this is from 2023 Stadium Club, and this is him celebrating what statistically was the single biggest hit in postseason baseball history. He is the only uh, the only player ever to hit a three run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning when your team is trailing by two. So the, in terms of win probability added, that swing against Robbie Ray in the division series in 2022 was, was the biggest postseason swing ever. That was, was awesome. that was a big moment, really, oh, yeah. looking back oh, yeah. at it. Yes, and uh, they, they propelled them all the way to the World Series. Um, so this is him like just about to join the dog pile at home plate. And a little extra bit of excitement about this card is it's the 91 image variation. And this mm -hmm. is the only, only versions of this the card that he signed that has on-card auto. So there's 25 of these. And then there's this chrome stickers, but bleh, 
we don't, we don't like those. Bad. Yeah, and I love on the shot how you can see the fans. You see the whole celebration. Yes. It's, it's like like you said right before he's ready to see his teammates at the plate. Great yeah, tomorrow. absolutely. If you saw that live, it was just like it reminded me of the the uh, the Pujols homer off Brad Lynch. Cool. Just like absolutely stunning. Like hit so hard and so loud. All right, from the same set. Uh, this this image is from Felix Hernandez's last time on a mound, uh, Major League mound. Uh, he was pitching for the Seattle Mariners, of course. And this was, I think, one out in the sixth inning. Uh, Scott Service came to get him. And you kind of look closely. You can see all those orange strikeout and Felix signs in the background. He hugged all his teammates. This is a pretty fantastic moment. It's, it's on YouTube. Um, I highly encourage you guys to go check it out. Just like a Seattle legend yeah, leaving the mound for the last time. It will get dusty in your house as you watch it. You can hear the broadcasters uh, kind of getting a little choked up, but it's it's just really cool. And much like the Jordan, there's only 25 autos of this. The only uh, ones he signed are the 91 variations. So you just don't see these cards very often. And I like to think he took extra time with his signature here because that moment meant a lot to him. So I'm also hoping Tops doesn't just reuse that image over and over and over and over and over again. They they wouldn't do that. They've never done that before. No, never. Certainly. All right, one more. Very image image focused. Uh, twenty fourteen tops opening day has some really rare uh, SSPs. Jeff and I call them SSPs. I think they list them as SPs, but these things are ghosts, like you never see them. So we had a chance to talk about a card that we had discussed in our one of our first blabbing videos ever. We did we highlighted um, five super short prints that we really liked, and this was one of them. And people commented on it; they'd never seen it. It is a preposterous uh, baseball card. It's of Jose Fernandez. Miami mm -hmm. legend. A good yeah. one. I know what it is. And uh, it, I, I don't think I need to say anything else. It's got two. There's two things about this card I love. Um, it's baseball and it's dinosaurs. And I think if any of us have an opportunity as adults to hug a velociraptor, you know, we're taking that opportunity. <laughs> um, so this card is just, this is really cool. Um, I came up on eBay and uh, I recognized the, the handle. It's an IG account. So I messaged the guy and we ended up making a deal pretty quickly on it. It's a stupid amount of money to pay for a, a baseball card of a guy who, while he was super electric and incredible and exciting, he didn't have the career, you know, the that we were all hoping for various reasons. But this card is great, and it's sort of a combo. It, it pairs nicely with another Jose Fernandez card that Jeff and I have. Um, it does. That I believe he yeah. has on, a, on his person. I'll put it right oh, up wow. here. Right so we've got the Jose Fernandez with creatures might be the best way to describe uh, these two cards. Yeah, so and it, it's a good indication of the personality that he had, which is yes, great. yeah. Jose yes. would only be 20, what is he, 10 years ago, about 20, 31, 32 right now. So oh, he'd still be in his prime, still be in his prime. Yeah. He would have been the best pitcher in baseball, yeah. yeah. Or he would have had nine Tommy Johns, yeah, or well, at least one Tommy John or for both. sure, with how hard he yeah. threw. But, but anyway, that's the thing I've been kind of looking at, like. Just really digging more into images, especially stadium club stuff. I put up a reel on my Instagram of just like 30 random stadium club, like mid-level stars that have autographs. Like there's a great David Cohn autograph after his perfect game. Um, there's David Wright holding up an apple. There's some really incredible stadium club autographs. If you PC anyone that's played in the last seven years, so search for stadium club auto and see if they're in there. Yeah, that's, okay. that's a tough one for, I like, okay, I'll shut up about Billy Butler, but it's hard when, he has he only has like two short prints ever, yeah. and none of them are in Stadium Club, so that's unfortunate. It is really cool to see what they did in the last few years with that stuff. They did a good job. Yes, there are some good. I think that Larry Walker's got some Stadium Club autos, though. I think. I have a hard time buying post playing day cards of players. I have a really hard time with that. Am I the only one, or does that not bug you all? It doesn't bother me, but a lot of people do. Yeah, I mean, if the image is great, then then I'm good with it. Like in that same set, there's a Rivera auto that I've been trying to track down, but again, there's only 25. It's it's the moment where Jeter and Pettit came and took him out of the game. Yeah. So he I only think, he has yeah. sticker autos, and then he has 25 of those like 91 autos and a box. I think top. that's the thing. Like post playing yeah. days, if it's a specific moment from their playing days, to me, it's just yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. that it came out afterwards. Yes, I would agree with that exactly. Yeah, Larry Walker, he's in a ton of product. He has tons of autographs, and I don't really have much interest in much besides maybe a cool Dynasty art patch auto. That's about it. Um, okay. He says that today, and then tomorrow he's going to be like, check this out, guys, and it's going to be a Larry Walker and I'm playing Days Auto. There was a Larry Walker. It was him holding the MVP award, I believe, in 2021 Stadium Club. 
autograph yeah. number to 10. It was mm-hmm. like 20 bucks. And I'm like, I, I don't, I'm good. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Any other cool pickups? Let's test as tops to put a Billy Butler Stadium Club short print yeah. variation up. That'll be the post playing day I'll buy. They should do something like that. They, they like put the legends in there all the time. Player. I can't believe they haven't yet. They did that. I remember in, in 2005, 2004, Tops 52 basketball. It was like my favorite set ever as a kid. I bought so much of that set. Hey, uh, here's an idea. Here's an idea. We're, we're this People who are commenting last time they want two hour videos are going to be happy with this one. But, uh, mm-hmm. What you know, they're always doing like the throwback sets, you know, 25th anniversary, blah blah blah. Like, what if they did one that was like 20th, 25th anniversary all star game as like an insert set? And then you actually have like the all star that you remember, oh shoot, I forgot that guy was a uh, was an all star one year, you know, yeah, I like that, etc. Yeah. I like that. I would you know. that's that's what I would buy with Billy, but uh, back oh, in like sure. 2005, top 52. What they did is they had the fan favorites autographs where oh. they would literally do buyback autos. I don't know. I wish they did that with B- Butler and stuff. He's not good enough. Do a anyway. side by size and tops update or something, you know, where they have this year's first baseman NL and 25 years ago, first baseman NL. Like, I don't know. He has a higher career like OPS thing. plus than Jeter. He also is a better defender. According to here Jeter. comes here. the blazer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Your, your, your only hope, your only hope is he's in the background of someone else's photo. That that's really your only <laughs> hope. I, I have a Mike Trout short, super short print with Billy in the background. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Okay. Thanks for watching everybody. I apologize for being annoying. See ya.